Change can come on tiptoe. Love is where it starts. It resides, often hides, deep within our hearts. And just as pebbles make a mountain, raindrops make a sea. One day at a time, change begins with you and me. Just by giving and receiving comes belonging and believing. Every sun that rises never rose before. Each new day leads the way through a different dawn. Walking through the world, changing it in quiet ways. Ordinary miracles, like candles in the dark. Each and every one of us lights a spark. And the walls can talk. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you, thank you. All right, good morning. Well, today is very special because it's Reverend Sidney's birthday. So could we sing to Reverend Sidney? Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Yahoo! So, today is also Palm Sunday uh, on the Christian calendar, so who doesn't love Palm Sunday, huh? I mean, this was one of my favorite weeks of the year growing up because it was a major food week in our house. Uh, it just was insane. And, um, and you know, that just really pleased me as a kid, that there was always great, great stuff. So, when we talk about the Bible and the science of mind, all of the characters in the Bible are us, okay? So this is not about other people or people thousands of years ago. This is 
all about what's happening in our lives and our consciousness, how we're growing spiritually, how we're dealing with life and challenges. So Jesus goes to Jerusalem, the holy city of peace, in order to celebrate the Passover. Do you know what was one of the most amazing things when I came into metaphysics that I realized that Jesus was not Catholic or Protestant? I had no idea. I had been brought, if Jesus wasn't Catholic, surely he was at least a Protestant. I didn't know he was a rabbi, he was Jewish. So metaphysically, we let, what's happening here, I believe, is that we are allowing that presence of the Christ, the mind that knows its oneness with God and expresses that oneness through an energy of unconditional love, that's the Christ, we let that Christ rise triumphantly up in us. Sounds good. Sounds good. I could use a big dose of that right now. Um, so Jesus rides into town on a donkey, and there are palms strewn on the path. Uh, and while he's in town, he disrupts the temple. He heals some people. Now, basically, what he has done is he has spent the last three years teaching around Galilee that the kingdom of God is at hand. He was baptized three years earlier by John the Baptist, proclaiming that the good news of the kingdom was here. And so here he is, he and his disciples, they come to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover, which metaphysically means the passing over or moving from one state of consciousness to a higher state of consciousness. Now, we teach in the science of mind that, yes, we have a human experience, but we are also all divine. In fact, the divinity that is within us is mostly who we really are, you know? So Jesus, this is what Jesus did. He awakened people to their divinity. Like, hey, wake up, you're divine. You are not the little nothing you thought you were. You are not small. You are not the mistakes of the past. You are not any of that. Who you are is you are divine. You are of God. And he taught two laws that seem to be really important, to love God fully and to love your neighbor as yourself. So if we want something in our life, his approach is that we should seek first the kingdom of God and everything else will be added, right? And he says to his disciples that people will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Doesn't that sound so easy? Oh, just love one another. Boy, is that hard to do, isn't it? Because it seems to me that the human personality can always find a reason why we should withhold. Somebody does something, says something, shows up a way that is not okay with us, and we think, ah, but in this case, it's okay to withhold my love. So Palm Sunday encourages us to do a few things, and one is to make a plan. You have to have a plan, right? In life, or just for today, you have to have a plan. We have to find out, and by find out, I mean we have to ask within what it is we are supposed to do. God, spirit, infinite intelligence, that's everywhere and within me. What is it I am supposed to do here? Let me know. And I always say, in a way that's clear that I understand because you know how thick I can be sometimes. Yes, it's true. And then with that plan, we have to work the plan, right? This is how I feel like our life really takes on meaning because we ask. Not in a human way, but we ask in that spiritual divine way, knowing that there's something within us that's greater than all of that's out here in the world of form, and that there's something we are truly here to do. At every stage, at every moment in our life, I believe this is true. And this is how we find that our life continues to have meaning. So we conquer the thing that needs to be done, and we do it, right? That's just it. So riding into Jerusalem, I think, is riding into a higher consciousness, that where we know, you know, I'm here with something to do. I'm just not here to suck up oxygen. You know, I am here with a divine purpose. There's something that I came into the world for. And for all of us, I don't ever think it's one thing. I think it's many things, that there are many, many beginnings, many chapters, that we have a mission, that we're here for a reason. So Palm Sunday, here's what I get this time, and it's probably going to be different next year, but at least where I am with Palm Sunday this year, what I think this means is that Palm Sunday is a surrender, and surrender is the solution. Now, what, what do I mean by that? Well, in spring, seeds and bulbs that are underground, they surrender to what they are to become, to what they are yet to be. So through our deep connection with God, there is a way for each and every one of us to receive deliverance from whatever it is that we struggle with right now. Jesus said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So he knew something about what we needed to do. He knew that this 
where this was going. You know, and, and he knew where his own path was leading, I believe, and he rides into town anyway. I mean, frankly, if I look at the story and I think, if I knew that was happening, I don't think I'd go to Jerusalem. You know, I'm thinking Club Med, I'm thinking something else, but, but not like, really? I, you know, it's going to end, it's going to not end seemingly well for me? Hmm. But he knew what he needed to do. So I believe he did what he came here to do. Now, some people got it. Some people did not get it. And now he surrenders to what is next. Right? So when we have done everything, and this, this comes up in metaphysics and religious science all the time. When we have done everything we know how to do humanly, and you have to do everything you know how to do humanly. When we have prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed, and we have affirmed and affirmed and affirmed and affirmed, and we have visualized like crazy, and we have been meditating, and we have been reading the good books that we know we're supposed to be reading, and we're trying to be of service somewhere in our life, and we're doing everything we know how to do, and we humanly cannot seem to make that something happen, whatever it is, we have to surrender to something greater. Now, God is not a power that wants to control us, but is a presence that seeks only to fulfill us. And so that area of our life that we cannot make the way we want it to be, no matter how much we affirm and meditate and treat and visualize and on and on and on, we just can't make it be the way we know it's supposed to be, that becomes our holy jumping off place. It's our call to go deeper spiritually. And you know, the science of mind does not operate at one level. That having studied this for many, many years, I really realized that Ernest Holmes was a very deep spiritual thinker. And the science of mind operates on lots of different levels, depending upon where we are in consciousness and what we need to be working with or what we need to be healing. So the degree, to the degree that the spirit of God is alive in us, I believe we have the capacity to overcome whatever the world seems to throw at us. This is why it's such a powerful example I think for many of us, you know, darkness sets in when the light is not present. But where there is light, there cannot be darkness. So what that means is that I have to be being the light all the time. I have to be cultivating the light. I have to be affirming the light. I have to be calling forth the light within myself and other people all the time so that darkness just doesn't settle in from inertia. You know, in science of mind, sometimes we might be called to, to like really like, okay, I've got to really fight this problem. Right? I have certainly done that. I have done that, and I have found that to be effective sometimes. But always, I think we are charged with affirming the truth, even though it is not appearing right now. See, this is the thing in science of mind that is so challenging for people, that we're given a world full of evidence, but that's not what guides us. What guides us is something unseen. What guides us is something on the inside. So it's easy to praise God and affirm God and say, oh, life is good when everything's going well, isn't it? You know, when everybody's behaving themselves and we've got some money in the bank and the car is full of gas, you know, and you've been to the grocery store, it's really easy to say, yeah, life is really good. God is good. Praise God all the time. But sincerely, Sincerely, to surrender the depth of spirituality that I think that that really takes to say, all right, I'll get on my donkey and I will ride into Jerusalem. See, surrender is a different state of consciousness. I'm not trying to make anything happen. What I'm doing is I'm allowing. And now I can only do this allowing if I have faith and I have trust and I have belief. I'm not going to be allowing anything if I don't have faith, if I don't trust, and if I don't really believe. All right? Because I have faith in God and faith in me, because I trust the universe, because I believe in the goodness of God, the loving kindness of God, that the light always outshines the dark, that God within me and you is greater than any condition that we go through. Every moment of our life, we're deciding you know, how, how it's going to unfold. Whatever is going on in our lives, we could be peaceful right now even though it's going on, even while it's going on, even while it's getting settled and figured out, we could be peaceful in the process. I think so often what seem like the absolute worst experiences of our life can be what calls us to go to deeper God. You know? Because you know when, you know how you pray when everything's okay? 
It's like, yeah, thank you, God. Life is good. It's all good. I'm all good. I'm happy. But you know when you have something big on your plate, how sincerely you pray? You know, like, like you really bring the, I hate to say it, but you bring the big guns to the table. You know, it's like, okay, God, now we're going to pray. We're going to really pray. We're going to touch the hem of the garment. We are going to connect with the Most High. We're going to speak our word, and we're going to see heaven and earth move. That kind of praying I'm talking about. See, it's humbling. In humbling ourselves, we're not making ourselves less. I'm humbling my ego personality so that I can surrender. Right? I'm opening my mind, my heart, my consciousness to give God full sway and allow myself to actually be more in the process. See, the, the human personality says, if you surrender, you're going to be less, but it's not. If you surrender, you're opening to more of the fullness of the spirit. So I'm not running my life nearly as much as I think. Yeah, I and mean, I like to think I am. I do. I really like to think of myself as an in charge, on the ball, on top of things kind of guy. And I realize that most of that is truly an illusion. I mean, it doesn't mean I don't do all the things I have to do and do them with, stop moving, and do them with good consciousness. <laughs> but areas that work well, I believe in those areas of our life, and we all have them, in some way, we have fully invited God in. We've said, okay, God, you're in charge of this area, basically. I have surrendered to God in those areas. But there is an area, or perhaps areas, that I hold back, you know? Because I, and basically, what I'm telling myself is God wouldn't really understand this. You know, God, God doesn't really understand money in the year 2022. God doesn't understand relationships. God doesn't understand traffic, you know? Uh, but there is an area where if we're holding back, now you and I both know at some point that we're going to get to the place, if we hold back long enough, we're going to get to the place where we beg God to take it, whatever it is, right? You know, because like when you've done it your way and done it your way and done it your way and it hasn't worked, ultimately we're going to be open to something a little greater than that. If these ideas live in us, they will actually be reflected in our lives. So what I want you to hear today is that surrender is not sacrifice. It is renunciation. I can get, in, in renunciation, we're giving up the lesser in order to experience the greater. So how can I do this? Because one, I know that God is the power. That's what we teach in Science of Mind. God is all there is. God is the only power, the only principle, the only presence operating in our life. And the second piece of this is that no challenge we have is greater than God. I mean, think about that. The biggest, biggest problem, the biggest difficulty, the biggest healing you're calling forth in your life is no big deal to God. You know, it, there, God's bigger than that. So this is science of mind. We are meant to have power. We're meant to have dominion. We're meant to have creativity in this world that we live in. And how we do that is, first of all, we remember that I am a spiritual being, that I am the incarnation of the Most High God. I am spirit. That is my true identity. And if I could stay connected to that truth, what happens is that my experience of personal power, uh, my effectiveness in the world actually increases. See, I think when we are dedicated to God, we are actually more powerful. When we are dedicated to God, we are lifted above obstacles just in a very natural way. So when we say love God and surrender to God, that's, that's not something out here. You know, we're not talking about giving our power over to something that's outside of ourselves, but inside of us. Remember, it, God is a presence that seeks to fulfill us. It was before the crucifixion that Jesus said, I have overcome the world. What would it take for us to be able to say that to ourselves, that I have overcome the world? And I believe what he's saying is, I have overcome the difficulties of the world. I have overcome the challenges of the world. I have overcome those opportunities where the world was saying, here's something big you really need to heal. See, my encouragement to all of us is to go for God first. If we go for God first, if we put God first, everything else will line up. Right? So with God, I think we are meant to overcome whatever obstacle, whatever challenge we might face. See, because those things, they're a product of our mind being separate from God. 
But if our mind is unified with God, if we know we're, I am one with God, and if we live from I am one with God, and if we practice God is all there is, we are going to have such a different experience. Right? That's, that's what gives rise to the conditions being conditions that we like or conditions that uh, we feel so separate in. Uh, so, here we are riding into Jerusalem, and there's something, something I suspect for each and every one of us that we have to surrender. And this surrender is not giving up, it's not quitting, it's not giving in, it's nothing like that. It's saying, you know, that I of my own self can do nothing, but the Father, Mother, God within can do everything. So, you think right now about what it is you have to surrender in your life that's where you're going to open to allow God to work in a greater way. Let's pray. So we turn our attention inward now for a moment, remembering that right here, the place whereon we stand is holy ground, that we are surrounded, we are filled with God's infinite, loving, intelligent, creative spirit. It is the truth about us that we are emanations of the Most High God. And so all that is true about the infinite spirit is true about each and every one of us. We are emanations of love and light and wholeness and joy and peace and every good and perfect thing. And so in this awareness of our oneness with God, we further know and affirm that we are all connected with each other on the unseen side of life. And so in this awareness, I speak the word for each and every one of us that if there is something that it's time for us to surrender, maybe it's a relationship or maybe it's something physical that we have to let go of or... Maybe it's an attitude or a belief that we have held on to for so long. Maybe it's being right. Whatever it is that we are ready to need to surrender, we do so now. We place it on the altar within our own heart, saying, Spirit, I've learned everything I need to from this. It serves no purpose. I hand it all over to you. Because I know that in the infinite mind that is God, God knows what to do with it. And so we include in our prayer today our family members and friends, our parents and children, all of those that we love and hold near and dear. We see them in our mind's eye. And we surround them with an energy of love and peace and healing and abundance and every good thing. We let this prayer emanate out from our sanctuary now to include all people everywhere. All those situations in the world that are so painfully pulling at our attention we say, God is right there. I will not be guided by appearances. I will be guided by the spiritual truth within me. And God is present in all of it. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere. We bless synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together today. That because we've joined together in consciousness, in search of the one, the one spirit, the one life, the one love. I know that there is healing for each and every one. And so with a grateful heart, I say thank you, God, that this is the truth. I release this word into law, knowing that it's done, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. I am so All right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much.
I suggest, may I suggest to you, may I suggest this is the best part of your life. I suggest this time is blessed for you this time is blessed and burning bright just turn your head and you'll begin to see the thousand reasons that were just beyond your sight best part of your life. There is a world that's been addressed to you, addressed to you, intended only for your life. treasure chest in you of private scenes and brilliant dreams that mesmerize a tender lover's smile a tiny baby's hand the million stars that fill the turning sky at night and I suggest oh I suggest this is the best part of your life. There is a hope that's been expressed in you, the hope of seven generations. Maybe more. This is the faith that they invest in you. It's that you'll do one better than was done before. Inside you know, inside you understand, inside you know it's yours to finally set right. This is a song comes from the west to you comes from the west comes from the slowly setting sun This is a song with a request of you to see how very far the endless days will run suggest yes I suggest to you oh I suggest this is the best part of your life I suggest this is the best part of our life
you. Joanne, how did you know? That is one of my favorite songs. Me too. That was beautiful. I, you know, my birthday is complete. That's the best present that anyone could have given me. Now, my husband is still responsible for presents, however. So you're not off the hook, Charlie. No, he listened to me, not you. All right. You can get Joanne's music on iTunes, and I suggest you do, because it's really good. So if this is the first time that you've ever been here, what a great place, right? Yeah. <laughs> and we do this every Sunday and every Wednesday. So I want to invite you to pick up a, um, an information packet. We have a whole table out there, just around the corner to the left, with information not just about the church, but we have different groups and teams, ministry teams and service opportunities. This is a wonderful place to connect and to create a community, to create a spiritual family. So I hope that you will do that. Uh, for all the ways that you can make donations to our church, go to nhcrs.org slash give. Um, now, we do prayer here, and we are like, into prayer, really good, powerful prayer, like prayer on steroids. So I want to invite you, if you have issues in your life, you've got stuff going on, then please, we have practitioners available for prayer after the service. And that also means, for our beautiful live streamers, we have prayers available for prayer on Zoom. So if you're on Facebook, hop over to Zoom, and you will be taken care of. Uh, Wednesday evening is our service with me, Reverend Sydney. Um, we start at 6.50, and the service be for meditation, which is so good. Oh, my gosh, come for that. And then the service itself is at 7 o'clock. And my topic this week is divine audacity. So you are the light of the world. Dare to be that. So to, we're going to talk about how to use your divine identity as your first resource, not your last resort. Men's group today is meeting at 11 a.m. in the Ernest Holmes room and on Zoom, and all men are welcome. By the way, you can get links for all of our Zoom things by going to our website. There's always, you just scroll down and there it is. The women's group today is meeting at one uh, in the youth church and on Zoom, and our special guest speaker this month is Andrea Silberman. Oh my gosh, she's really a, you know, one of her superpowers is gardening. So just, you know, FYI, every, all women are welcome. Um, we have a new time, so make sure you mark this. Our Good Friday service on April 15th is going to be at 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. What time is it going to be? Thank you, because we have a fundraising dinner at 7. W-W-J-E. What would Jesus eat? Oh, come on now. That's really good. That was it. That's one of his best things. What's wrong with you people? That's cute. What would Jesus eat? We're going That's, to serve you a beautiful... Yeah, a four-course Middle East Eastern dinner. Yeah, Middle Eastern-ish <laughs> dinner. So, and it's really it's going to be a wonderful time. Because, you know, we haven't had a lot of opportunities to get together over the last two years. You might have noticed this little thing that kept us apart. So come join us. It's $35 a person. That's nothing. So come and be with us that night. Uh, that you can get the um, tickets online and also at, at our website and also at, uh, at the table on the patio. So that's April 15th, Good Friday. Come to have dinner with us and make it a really good Friday. All right. That was good, too. Come on now. <laughs> so calling all kids, parents, and friends. On Easter Sunday, April 17th, we will have our Easter egg hunt for our youth on the church lawn immediately following the 945 service. All kids are welcome. Be sure to invite your family and your friends. Now, this happens quickly. So if you want to be here and take pictures or just take in the energy, man, it's like the flash. So make sure you are there. Um, and if you would like to donate filled plastic eggs, please bring them to the office. We will take them. Thank you very much. Um, we have a Zoom virtual patio before and after our Sunday and Wednesday services. Zoom meditation every Monday through Saturday morning from 7.55 to 8.15 a.m. And again, you can get the link from this, for this rather, by going to our website, nhcrs.org. Um, 
you can get more information. If you can sign up for our, our weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. We have so much going on, so I hope you'll visit the website. And let's stand up and sing the peace song. So please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I am living love. Amen. Thank you.